and welcome to video lesson on embellishments. <clears throat> so there are loads of embellishments that you can play and pipe in. You'll get grace notes, barrels, um, such like. In pipe band drumming, you'd have flams, drags, and Swiss roughs and four stroke roughs. And the technical term for an embellishment is a short symbol placed before a note and it's used to adorn the music or to enhance the music. Okay, so that specific note in which the embellishment is placed upon is going to be enhanced. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I've got, I'm going to draw two quavers up here. Okay, just a right left tap. I've just got right left. If I want to enhance that first note, I would put a flam in front of it, or I could put a flam in front of it, like that. So you'll see that the note is the same, no value's not changed, the tap after it's not changed, I've just put a uh, flam on front of it. And we'll talk through how to draw the embellishments in a second. And I've just put an accent on it as well, because not all flams are accented, am I right? So let's rub this out quickly. So I said embellishments were symbols placed before a note and they're used to enhance or adorn the music. So let's learn how to draw them now. So let's go for the flam first. So I'm going to do the flam symbol on its own and I'll do it just here. I'm going to do it fairly big. So it'll either be above the line or below the line. For now, a bit irrelevant, I'm just going to draw the symbol. So it's a smaller note head and it goes up the way. It comes down with a wee tail like that. And I'll do it once more. Smaller note head going up and a wee flick like that. So if I was to draw it onto a note, let's just draw a crotch here. And let's say that's on the right hand, so the flam embellishment would be below it, it'd be on the left hand. So it's placed before. And it looks like that. And there's your flam. And you'll see many artistic interpretations of the flam. Sometimes you'll see folk, they'll do things like this, and they'll do that. I've seen ones where it's not even tying. It's, it's kind of like this. I've seen that before. All right. For me, that's, none of them are my cup of tea. Like, I prefer it like that. And if you're using any music writing software, um, I use Ensemble, we plug, for um, my music writing at the schools that I teach. That's what the symbol will look like. And if I draw it here, I'm going to draw a right hand flam. So the flam embellishment will be on the left. And the, flam, the note in which the flam is played upon is there. So that would be a right hand flam. And a lot of you will think, well, why is it a right hand flam if the flam embellishment's on the left? Well, it's played onto a right. So there's your flam there. The note in which the embellishment's played onto is the right. So it becomes a right hand flam. And when you're playing it, your right hand would be high, like that. And I'll put a wee video up just now of me playing a right hand flam. So here's the right tap on its own. So I'm going to put the flam on it now. So notice, it's just a little left tap before the right, and it's enhancing that note. That's a right flam. Now we'll look at a left hand flam. So, exact same rule applies. I'm going to do a crotchet here. And the flam embellishment would be above the line this time. And it's there. Same tie, just like that. And same rule applies, okay? You'll be thinking, well, the embellishment's written on the right. That should be a right flam. Bro! <laughs> it is a left flam, okay? Because that is the note. The left hand is the note in which the embellishment's written onto. For example, the left hand tap is the note that you've improved by putting an embellishment on it. Okay? And 
here's a wee video of me playing some left hand flange for you. So here's just the left hand. So let's make it a flam. And it's just a little right tap placed before the left. The left doesn't change. And that's a left flam. Next embellishment we're going to talk about is the drag. Okay. So think back to the rule we said with the flams. Okay, it's the exact same idea. So if you were to play a right hand drag, the tap's going to be on the right and the embellishment's going to be below. And if you were to play a um, left hand drag, the note will be below and the embellishment will be above. So let's draw a right hand drag. So this is how the symbol will look. It's two smaller notes this time. Come up like the flam, except it's going to have an extra beam there. Alright, so it's theoretically two tails or two beams. And that's it there. And I'll do it again. Two smaller notes or note heads coming across like that. That's what a drag looks like. And of course, on its own, it's fairly useless. So let's write it on to some notes. So here's a right hand tap. And like I said before, if I want to do a right drag, the drag's going to be played before that to enhance that note. So the drag comes before it and it will be below the line and it will look like that. That is a right hand drag and I'll put a wee video up and we playing some right hand drags. So here's your right tap, same as with the right flam and let's put the drag in front of it. Same movement as a flam except the embellishment is a very tight buzz but you'll still hear the buzz sound. And that's a right hand drag. Now here's a left hand drag. Again, it's going to be the exact opposite of what we've just done. So if I were to do a left hand drag, the note that we're playing the drag upon is on the left. So it's below the line. Drag is up here. And that would be a left hand drag. Okay. I'm listening to some left hand drags now. So let's do our left taps. And then let's put the drag in. So same again, same movement as a flam. The only difference is the embellishment is a tight buzz, a very low, under control tight buzz. And that's a left drag. You know when you heard those drags there, the embellishment itself is a very very tight buzz, but Notice how I said buzz, a lot of people will play it as a completely killed, like dead stroke. I still quite like a wee buzz sound when I'm doing a drag, so you have heard like a little buzz. Similar sound to the flam, except that little tiny tight buzz before it. Okay? Right, let's look at four stroke roughs. So, same again, it's going to have the note on the bottom and the embellishment above. So we'll do how to write them first. Similar to a drag, okay, except some of them are going to be above, some will be below the line this time. And they would look like this. Small notes again, but clearly one is above the other. Okay, so there's three teeny tiny taps there. And I'll do it again. One, two, three. There we are. So let's draw them on notes then. So I'm going to do a four stroke rough finishing on the right. So there's the note in which the embellishment is played upon. It will be left, right, left, finishing on that right there. And then you'll get bruh. So that's a four stroke rough starting on the left, finishing on the right. And here's some four stroke roughs on the left to right. So here's your right tap. And then let's put the rough in front of it. And 
And that is a four stroke rough starting on the right. Now some four stroke roughs starting on the right. So if it starts on the right, just four taps, one, two, three, four, it's going to finish on that left hand. So there's a left tap, and it will be one, two, three, and then the fourth one is the note in which the embellishment is played upon. So that is your four stroke rough. Starting on the right, right, left, right, left. Bruh. That sort of snappy sound. Bruh, bruh. Okay, here's some four stroke roughs on the right. So let's do the left tap. And let's put the four stroke rough before it. So you see I'm starting on the right and finishing on the left. And that's the right four stroke rough. And the final embellishment we'll deal with today is the Swiss rough. Okay? and looks very similar to the four stroke rough the only difference is instead of right left right left or left right left right there's a double there so you're going to start and finish on the exact same hand so if I draw it here if you started above the line on the right your next two would be on the left da, da, da. like that and if I was to do it the opposite way around do the first one below Ta, ta, ta. And again, these notes will be above or below the line. Like that. So let's draw it on the board then. So let's do a rough starting and finishing on the right. So I'm going to do the note in which the embellishment is played upon first, as I always do. And then it will be right, left, left. There you go. So that's how it would look. Right, left, left, right. And here's some Swiss roughs on the right hand for you. So let's do the right taps first. And then let's put the rough in. And that's a Swiss rough starting the right and finishing on the right. And now we'll do a Swiss rough starting and finishing on the left hand. So you'd be left, right, right, left, and the right hand would be the double. So we're finishing on the left, so I'm going to, as always, do the note in which the embellishment is played upon. You'll be left, right, right, left. And that is a left hand Swiss rough. And like any of the embellishments, okay, just because it's an embellishment doesn't mean it's going to be played loud, okay? That's up to lean drummer or whoever wrote the drum score. Alright, it's their discretion whether that's loud or soft. If you want it to be played loud, by all means, you can put an accent on the end. I'm not a big fan of the embellishment itself being played loud. Alright, it just sounds like somebody's shouting like that. It's, it's not that great a sound. I think the last tap. For me, if you hit that last tap, it gives a really nice effect and it makes it sound like the whole rough is big when it's actually not, okay? It just gives it a nice snappy sort of sound to it. What you'll find as well is, and this is what I do when I'm writing out Swiss roughs, I don't actually write them as an embellishment. I'll write them what I call as freehand. So I'll have it say, I'm going to do rough to flam. Let's say I'm going to write this. And I'm just writing something very quickly. So that's rough tap flam. And that would become a triplet. Okay? So we're not going to delve into um, time signatures and music writing as such. But that's how I would write a Swiss rough. So that's it there. Okay? But if I wanted to write it as an embellishment, the way we were doing it a minute ago, all I would do is get rid of it. And this is why a lot of folk prefer doing it this way, because it's actually 
maybe easier for some folk to write it that way. For me, six and a half a dozen, but I prefer writing it freehand. That's how it would look there. Okay, so here's the left tap. And then let's put the embellishment in. And that is a Swiss riff starting on the left and finishing on the left. Right, so four embellishments we talked about was the flam, the drag, the four stroke rough and the Swiss rough. And remember we were saying an embellishment is a symbol placed before a note like we were doing here and it's used to enhance or adorn that note or the music. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me. One thing to note is when you're writing the embellishments let me give you a little example here. If I do a Swiss rough again, finishing on the left, when you're adding up for music writing purposes, so this bar, for example, if it was a 2 4, we'd need to have two crotchets. So let's just add your two crotchets, okay? That would be that bar complete, okay? The note values of the embellishment are not added up and it's hugely important to remember this, you do not add them up when accounting for um, the value of the beat per bar. And it's normally you would say uh, two quavers, add them up, that makes a crotchet. So there's my first beat. Four semis equals two quavers, which equals a crotchet. There's my second beat. Yes, it adds up. You don't add them up when it's an embellishment. All right, it's just a symbol placed before that note the note that you are going to add up, okay? So you would add up those notes, or the notes that the embellishment's played before. Do not add up the embellishment. But if you're writing it like I did before, freehand, then yes, you would add it up. And that's why I had a triplet there, to make sure it did add up, okay? So as always, if you have any questions at all about anything that I've covered today on this video, and get in touch and give us a shout. Excuse me. And there will be a couple of slides straight after this video to help explain embellishments.